you're gonna see both lungs, the entire lungs, all the way from the apices, all the way on the top, all the way up here, all the way to the cost, excuse me, costophrenic angles. So the apices are here, all the way down to the costophrenic angles. If you're missing a portion of the costophrenic angles, it needs to be repeated. Okay, so you can get that area. Okay, or if you're missing a, whatever portion you're missing, if the x-ray needs to be repeated so you can demonstrate the entire lungs, both left and right. Okay, also what you will observe, Yeah, uh, so the trachea will be filled with air. And as you can see there, right in the middle of that x-ray, see that black area, that black tube that goes up and down? Mm -hmm. That's a trachea, trachea filled with air. You will see the shadow of the heart and the gray vessels. bony thorax, which includes the sternum, ribs, uh, clavicles, uh, scapulae, are also going to be observed. I'll show you another radiograph in just a second, but to this area here is called the hilum, the hilum area, and the hilum area is where you see the bifurcation of the yeah. Left here and here. It's also called the carina. But as an area, listen carefully here. As an area, this is called the hilar area. And this is the hilum. And the hilum is always found in the middle of the lung, in the middle of the chest. <clears throat> Make sense? Okay. Let's go to the few more things. Some, some of the pathologies that can also be demonstrated, this is not limited to, that is, I mean, there, from a chest x-ray, you can have dozens and dozens of pathologies that can be identified, but for now, I want you to be responsible for this. Did you bring the dic your dictionaries? No. Um, dictionary. Okay, all right, so. So bring us glass. <laughs> Okay. Great. <laughs> Next time, <laughs> keep, keep, keep him with you all the time. So, what is a plural effusion? First of all, effusion means fluid. Okay? And so, in this case, it means fluid is present in the plural cavity. Okay? Which is not good because it will put pressure on your lungs. Okay? A pneumothorax, on the other hand, is air in the pleural cavity. Sometimes air will escape from the lung into the pleural cavity. Why will that happen? Because you have two layers. The pleural is two layers, right? And in between the two layers you have what? What is it called? What is that fluid called? Surfactant. Oh, yeah. Surfactant, right? So you have surfactant, and a lot of times you can be missing surfactant from an area, and then the two layers come in to come together, and then boom, you create a little hole. Okay, on one of the layers. If that, especially on the inner layer, if that's the case, then air from the lungs begin to escape into where the pleural cavity, and so the pleural cavity begins to expand, 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 because you have an area of low pressure and an area of high pressure. So the air is gonna go into the area of low pressure, right? Mm -hmm. it begins to escape and then the pleural cavity begins to expand, expand. And what it, what it does, it begins to put pressure on the lung because the lung is losing pressure. The uh, pleural cavity begins to gain pressure, okay? And so it can get to a point that he can actually collapse the whole lung. If that happens, that's what is called atelectasis. Atelectasis is a collapsed lung. 
<clears throat> so, to deal with the pneumothorax, typically what they do is they will put a tube in the pleural cavity. So you can increase the pressure on the pleural cavity higher than the lung. So they, they put air into it, and so air begins to flow back into the lung. And eventually when you have a higher pressure uh, or e higher pressure here than in the lung, then eventually the, uh, the uh, portion of the pleura that had opened up, it heals and it closes all by itself like that. Sometimes it takes a couple days or so. Uh, but it's, it's not extremely painful for what I understand, but it can be, uh, it's debilitating because it, it, you can't breathe can breathe and, and, and it hurts not to be able to get enough air, right? Uh, now, however, if you let it go to an atelectasis, that, that's a serious problem because now you, you have only one lung and, and one lung is not functioning. And so what they will do, they will put those tubes, they can put a big tube where they can put small valves that help change the pressure and then uh, it's healed that way. A few cases where they actually have to go surgically and repair that portion of the pleura. But for the most part, it can be fixed on its own. And you don't even have to uh, be exercising, you don't have to be doing anything. Sometimes you've seen patients that comment that they, are, they were just sitting down and then all of a sudden they began to feel like shortness of breath. So when we look at a radiograph, this is what we want. So the patient is with his chest, in this case, against the board, shoulders forward. Make sure you include from the apices all the way to the costophrenic angles. Central raised place at the end, at the bottom, or at the angle of the, uh, the scapula and the mid-sagittal plane, which is at the level of T7. Make sense? Uh, let's see what else I want to point at you. The placement of the image receptor is typically done from one and a half to two inches above the shoulders. Let me repeat that. The image receptor is placed one to uh, one and a half to two inches above the shoulder. Okay? If you have a, a patient that is pretty wide, and what is that called? What is that? Uh, body habitus called when you have someone that is wide. Hypersthenic. Hypersthenic. Okay, if you have someone that is hypersthenic and is pretty wide, then what you do is you turn the image receptor to be crosswise okay, instead of leaving it lengthwise. So it still is a 14 by 17, but crosswise. So it would be like horizontal? Mm -hmm. okay. Horizontal. So far so good? Yes. All right. Also, what we're, what we're gonna see is that once the radiograph is completed, and that's what is coming up next, but I'm gonna talk to you about it now. This is the criteria. You have done the x-ray. The x-ray is done. So what are you looking at? What, what, how do you know if this is a good radiograph or not? So this is where you're gonna look at. First, make sure that both lungs are included all the way from the costophrenic angles to the apices on both sides. Make sure that there is no rotation. How can we check for no rotation? Look at the clavicles and look at the uh, uh, sternum, look at the uh, sternoclavicular joints. Make sure that there is no space one more than the other. In this case, you have a little more space here than here, and that's fine, that's not bad. Remember that our bodies, when you split our bodies <laughs> through uh, the mid-sagittal plane, they are not identical. Nothing is identical. I mean, our faces are not identical. Our feet are not. One is larger than the other. Our hands, one is larger than the other. Everything is, is not proportional. I mean, it's close to, but it's not perfectly the same. And so you might have a little separation. That's fine. Okay. And then another thing you can do to look for rotation is you measure let me do it here because what you'll do is you can measure from the mediastinum measure okay so in this case you can measure about here to the middle do I have the same on this side pretty close mm -hmm. so 
pretty similar. So it's, it's, it's fine. There is no rotation. Okay. And then how do we know if it was a good inspiration or not? Excuse me. Uh, we do that. We know if it was a good inspiration when you can count at least 10 ribs on an adult. So you have one, two, three, four, five, what, see? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so 10 ribs. Starting here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. On a child, you can get eight. Okay? Sometimes it's difficult to get more than eight on a child. So if you have at least eight, fine. If you get nine, then more power to you. Got ten? Excellent. You did really good. But eight, you know, on, on a child. Make sense? Okay. Good. Is there a way without like seeing the sternum since it's against the front? Um, is there a way of knowing which is seven? Just from the back. Uh, from the front? Uh, well, I mean, if, you, if the front's against the, the bucky, is there a way of, of counting it from the back, just on the back? Or? Uh, yeah, it's probably uh, an inch above the, the sideboard process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will be about the same level. If you're doing an AP, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because PA, you're going to be palpating the back. You'll help it back. That's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you will pay the back. But if you were doing an AP, then yeah, look at the side point. It's about an inch above. Yeah, that's okay. So on the back, you find three. And you then find you, down. You, you find the bottom of the scapula. In here, angle of the scapula. Very easy. I'll show it to you. Very easy. All right. <clears throat> okay. Let's move on. So let's look at the evaluation criteria. I already show you no rotation. 10 possible ribs, 10 posterior ribs, I'm sorry. The scapula projected outside the lungs. I didn't talk about this. Let me show you that. See the scapula by moving the shoulders forward, then the scapulas are found, the uh, medial border of the scapula is here, right over the ribs, so it doesn't interfere with the uh, lungs. Look at here. In this case, the scap this was done AP. The scapula is here, the medial border is here. See that? Compared this side and this side, this is lighter, and that's because there's bone in there. Mm. Can, can you see it? Yeah. 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 See that? So this is the border of the scapula. And then the same thing here. Yeah. Mm. Just a little bit lighter. It's a little bit lighter, but that's, uh, you don't want it there. Yeah. You want to get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. And that's why moving the shoulders forward. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see what else. And that's it. Okay, how do you guys feel? All right, okay, let's start. Let's do it.